So I figured I would um, record another video since I showed folks how I like to wind my multi-tap onions. I figured I'd show another method um, of doing it with a single piece of wire, <clears throat> which I don't like to do. It's cumbersome. Um, well, it's not too bad, you know, if you settle into a comfy chair and have your work in your lap. Yeah, it's not a bad time. <laughs> By the way, that's how I tend to wind my toroids um, that I use in transceiver projects and such. Um, I just settle in with a pair of reading glasses on and uh, yeah, I enjoy it actually. So <clears throat> I wanted to show the other method. I'm going to keep pausing this video. It's not going to be a long video. Um, it won't take long. The winding will be done off camera, most of it. So this is uh, this is an FT12543 core. I thought they were FT12043 cores. I could have swore it. All my life I've referred to them as that. In all my life, I've been wrong. <laughs> I noticed that when looking up the AL value of some cores, and uh, I measured my cores, and yeah, they're 1.25 inches in diameter. So, what I don't like about, what I'm going to do is rewind this core, and I'll eventually cut it apart, because I'm not going to use it anymore. Um... But uh, I've got another FT12543 core that I'm in the process of winding. So the reason why, two reasons why I don't want to use this um, unun anymore is uh, the wire passing through the core. I do not like that. I do not like that. Um, this one is wound with these impedance ratios. 4, 9, 16, 36, 49, 64, 71, oddly enough. I guess that's all I could fit on there, or something. Um, but 4, 9, 16, then you cross over and carry on. I like mine to progress, I've said it again and again, around the core and end up with the highest impedance tap, whatever that may be next to the ground connection. Um, that's one thing I don't like about this on on. The other is that it goes 4, 9, 16, 36. It's missing a 25 to 1 Z ratio, Z ratio tap. And I like that one. Uh, I gotta have it. And what I want to do, so I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to be cutting the uh, BNC connector off, but I'm done with that one. Um, what I want to do is uh, wind a nice little true QRP core, if you want to call it that. <clears throat> it'll handle all of 5 watts, and it'll also handle all of 25 watts CW. Get a little warm key down. We'll look at that with this auto transformer, with this on, on when I'm done. But i got to make short work of this. What I've done so far, I measured my spools of hookup wire. And oddly, they measure the exact same as, uh, I already tossed it aside, but the brown wire, most of the wire that I used on the last video. So, uh... Man, I need smaller wire than that if I'm going to get all uh, eight taps on an, on that core. I'm going to rewind it. I'm sure going to try. But for now, <clears throat> to show my other winding method, um, I'm going to redo Little Schmo. Welcome to Little Schmo 2. <laughs> so, the three turns of yellow are my primary. I've already placed a red wire. Now this stuff here is 50 thousandths in diameter. The yellow is 77 thousandths or 78 thousandths. So this red wire is considerably thinner 
The insulation is also considerably thinner. And I'm going to put this dude through the test, man. I'm going to see. I'm going to see how it likes watts. And uh, so at this point, so I've got uh, the primary wound. I've got the secondary started and zip tied to the common, the ground. So, okay. Now I'm going to place six turns on this thing and that'll be our first tap. Hang on. Well, actually, I, I guess I'll show why I don't like this method. Actually, <laughs> maybe I should do this off camera because I can't see what I'm doing. Yeah, uh, you know what, man? You know what, man? Screw that. If I can't pull this off, they said wrong. <laughs> If I can't pull this off, they said something wrong, and there's something wrong with me. <laughs> okay, this is why you want to kind of do this thing laying in your lap, not in front of a camera, in front of a, behind a tripod. This is cool. It's cool. But you, uh, you see what I'm doing, just like I did in the uh, first one. It's just that these turns since the red is so much smaller than the yellow they're not sitting nicely side by side right no matter that's two turns through the middle the hell oh i see that kind of wants to be over there yeah we'll fix that up in a minute but there's two turns through the middle there that looks pretty let's uh make one more and then I'm going to pause this. And then, see, the only thing I wanted to show with the other winding method, when I reached the sixth turn, then I can show you the purpose of this <clears throat> gutter level amateur radio video. Why am I not liking what I see here? Well... Hmm. That's three turns. Yep, okay. Ground connection, 50 ohm input. I'm going to carry on until I've reached six turns. I'll be back. Okay. First thing I did was cut this curl off at the end of that wire. Man, that thing drove me nuts. Second thing I did was, I got desperate. Started freaking ripping around in my collection of Harbor Freight useless garbage zip ties. Desperately hoping to find one of the good ones from the 80s. From my first biomedical engineering job. Third thing I did was got some little tabs of tape I forgot. You want tape at hand. <laughs> and the th so I've got six windings on there now, right? I secured the primary turns on both ends with zip ties just for now. That one there is looking pretty ugly. But remember, son, the ugly ones work the hardest. They try the hardest. <laughs> That's so bad, man. Okay, so six turns. We're ready for our first tap, which will be our four-to-one tap. In the last video, I would just cut the wire off, strip it, strip the uh, end of the cut piece, twist them together, and carry forth, right? So instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the other end of the wire, pull it through, so that's seven turns. you got to remember, you just added another turn. So that's seven turns through the core. Oh, yeah. There we go. God, I hate that. I vowed not to rock the tripod. <laughs> Sounds like a song title, maybe by the king. So, rock the tripod. So that's another way of doing it. So there you go. You've done the same thing. You just haven't stripped the wire yet, right? But at that point, so I've made turn number seven through that core. This is turn number seven 
I need to have nine. I'm going to add two more. Hang on. Okay. So you can see, uh, I've added, uh, three more turns. So there's my sixth turn tap. This is my ninth turn tap. So the impedance, that's our 50 ohm input, four to one, nine to one. Okay. So now I'm getting ready to add a couple more turns, a few more turns and make the next tap which will be the 12th turn and the impedance ratio will be 16 to 1. So I'm going to show you another way of doing it which I've done in the past but I don't really like to because it's a hassle. It's kind of it's monkey work especially with little wire. If you're working with bigger wire then it, it, that method works okay. Um, and I may do it again in the future. I'm sure I will, but I'm going to add a couple more turns and show you what that method is. Hang on. Okay, this is our 12th turn, and that is our 16 to 1 impedance ratio. Okay, and one method I've used in the past to make this tap is if you want to make it real pretty, you can bend, make a bend in the middle of the core. Decide how much insulation you want remaining and mark it. Decide how long you want the loop. Kind of form a loop. Make another right angle. Kind of like you get the drift, right? What I would, uh, I would mark where I need to remove the insulation, right? The Sharpie's dead. Between those two black lines, that insulation's got to be gone. I'd straighten out the wire. Now, I, I would never try it with this thin stuff. It'd be a nightmare. You'd end up cutting strands of wire. I, um, with this, with this wire? Oh, yeah. No, well, not this, but you know what I mean. The, the transformer, the fluorescent transformer wire. That Teflon stuff, for sure. Do it for that, for sure. I grab the wire, twist my cutter, grab on that line, twist the cutter, and then take a knife blade and peel off one side of the insulation between your two um, cuts and then peel it off leaving you with an un uninsulated point part and then you can just form your tap and carry forth yeah you can see why i don't do that method anymore it's uh makes it pretty un um, but that's, uh, that's the other method. What I'm curious about with this, uh, with this rewind, well, it's not a rewind because this core has never been wound before, but what I'm curious about is with this small hookup wire that's only 50 thousandths in diameter, uh, can I get all eight taps on this thing? I want my 81 to one tap. <laughs> um, can I? I'll see. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to finish winding this thing in this video, but, uh, it'll be seen again. And, um, after I've had a chance to play with it and such, I'll, uh, do a little experimenting with it for power handling capability. And to see if it behaves the same as little schmo. And like I've said before, nothing can be born <laughs> without something dying. <laughs> I don't know what got me on that kick. But anyway, yeah. Anyway, this is what I'm after. <laughs> so, so I just got the uh, the
the new baby ununwound, the low power unun, the uh, replacement for little Schmo, and uh, I don't know what to call him. I thought of little Schmo too, but that's <laughs> how creative is that? I'm very happy. I'm happy to report that the unun is wound. I've got dinner at hand. I saved my blood pressure medication for post wind. And, uh, yeah, anyway, I soldered up the connections. I clipped off the twisties. And I thought, um, I thought I better cut off one at a time. And, and uh, you know, cut the, twi the, tur the turn off, cut, you know what I'm saying, straighten the wires, strip them, solder them, and uh, move on to the next. I thought it wise to do that lest uh, a turn fall off, you know, because there's only three turns, two turns between uh, taps. So, um, I need a pointer. Yeah, so I'm happy. Tucker's on. I need a pointer. Hey, birdie. Birdie, birdie, birdie. So, I'm happy that, uh, happy to report, no more turn passing through the middle, right? Um, you notice on this one, that was my first done on. I'm shaky. Hang on. Sorry about that. And you notice I twisted the primary and secondary turns together. I realized uh, that's pointless. On a on a unbalanced to unbalanced transformer, we don't need to maintain balance. <laughs> so anyway, little schmo t little schmo is no more. And in his place, him. So I'll find a BNC connector and see what we can do with this guy. 73.